All right, we're gonna talk about graphing cosecant and secant. And the really nice thing is, if you already know how to graph sine and cosine, you pretty much know how to graph secant and cosecant. Because um, what we do is, we start out with a particular function. So say we have y equals uh, a and then cosecant of bx plus c and then plus d. So that's kind of the general form that we looked at before. Well, that has what we call a guide function. And the guide function in this case, would just be sine, which I think makes sense. Um, and then the same sort of thing, if we have a function uh, secant, then the guide function that we're going to use works out to be a cosine function. Um, so that's what we're going to do to uh, graph these. So let's uh, do an example. So let's say I want to graph y equals 4 cosecant of 3x minus 2 pi, and then the whole thing minus 3. So the guide function is just going to be y equals 4 sine of 3x minus 2 pi and then the whole thing minus 3. So we collect all the information for the guide that we've been collecting before. So the period is going to be 2 pi, two pi over b, so 2 pi over 3. Um, the increment is that divided by 4, so that's 2 pi over 12, which works out 2 pi over 6. To find the start, take whatever's in parentheses, set it equal to 0, and solve. So that's going to give us um, x equals 2 pi over 3. We want the start and the increment to have the same denominator so that we can easily label up the x-axis. So I'm going to change 2 pi over 3 into 4 pi over 6. Uh, sinusoidal axis is just y equals d, um, so y equals negative 3. The amplitude in this case is 4, so to get to the maximum, I'm going to add 4 to the sinusoidal axis to get 1. Uh, the minimum, it's sinusoidal axis and then minus the amplitude, so that takes us to negative 7. And then we need to look at the pattern. So a is greater than 0. So the guide function is sine, so that's going to go intercept, maximum, intercept, minimum, intercept. Um, the next thing I want to do is uh, create my x-axis, kind of label it up. So right in the center there is going to be 4 pi over 6. Uh, I'm actually only going to label every other one to keep it a little bit cleaner, but it's really not going to be that clean. Um, so it appears as if I'm counting by 2 pi over 6, but it's just that I'm skipping every other one. And going backwards, you see that the y-axis does end up 1. So uh, if I moved to the left again, uh, I'd end up at just 0 pi over 6. So that's where I'm going to put my y-axis. Do that. Label that up. Okay. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to graph the guide function. Uh, so dot in the sinusoidal axis at negative 3. Now, at the start, it should be an intercept. This is the guide function, not the actual function. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the intercept in uh, with kind of an open circle. And from there, it's just going to be the same thing that I would do for a sine graph. So I'm going to go up to a maximum, intercept, minimum, intercept. All my intercepts now are going to be open circles. And then to go backwards, just follow the pattern. Um, now, I want to turn this into ultimately a cosecant. So if it were sine, I would just fill in the curve. As you can see, I'm using dotted line because it's not actually a part of the graph. I'm just showing you what would happen. So this would be a graph of sine and it would be good. But what I want to do is everywhere there's an intercept for the guide function, it becomes a vertical asymptote for the, the actual function. So I'm going to dot that in, and then I'm actually going to do that for all of them. So you get vertical asymptotes every i in the pattern of the guide function. Um, and if you want to think about why that's happening, uh, take a value and plug it in and see what would happen. Uh, you end up taking the reciprocal of zero kind of before you do the transformations. Um, so it becomes undefined. Anyway, uh, now I need to fill in the curve. So what happens with the curve is that it goes away from the guide function. So, uh, for example, here, it's going away from the guide function. It's kind of like you're taking the guide function and kind of exploding it so it goes away. Um, and then the bottom one is like this. And then we can fill in this one and fill in this one. All right, and that's a graph of 4 cosecant of 3x minus 2 pi, all minus 3. And it's not so bad as long as you know how to graph sine and cosine. So one more thing that I want to do. I want to find the domain of this. So the domain is going to be uh, x is an element of the real numbers. Uh, x definitely cannot be 0. And then if I move 2 increments over, or 2 pi over 6, it can't be that. And if I do it again, it can't be that. So that's going to be 0 plus... Uh, 2 pi over 6 times n, where n has to be an integer. Um, so that's the domain. You can use the graph to find the domain. Uh, let's take a look at y equals negative 3 secant of pi x plus pi, and then all plus 2. 
So the guide function in this case is going to be y equals negative 3 cosine of blah, blah, blah. Uh, let's collect all the information. So the period is 2. The increment is 1 half. Let's divide the period by 4. The start is x equals negative 1. I want the same uh, denominator as the increment, so negative 2 over 2. Sinusoidal axis is 2. Uh, the amplitude is 3, so I add 3 and I subtract 3 from the sinusoidal axis to get the maximum in. And then a is less than 0, so the pattern for the guide function is minimum intercept, minimum intercept, minimum. I don't know what I just said. Minimum intercept, maximum intercept, minimum. Maybe what I said. Uh, I got an x-axis, so in the dead center of that, I'm going to put the starting point, and then finish labeling that up. So again, I'm counting, uh, I'm only labeling every other, and zero worked out to one of them again, so that's where I'll put my y-axis, and label that up. So we're graphing, uh, basically we're graphing the guide function, so dot in the sinusoidal axis at y equals 2, and then what I want to do is... Um, it starts at a minimum, so at the starting point I put a minimum, which is y equals negative 1, and then open circles every intercept, and kind of fill in the pattern. All of the intercepts are going to become uh, vertical asymptotes again. So if I were graphing the cosine graph, it would look like this, but I'm not. I'm trying to graph a secant graph, so all the intercepts become vertical asymptotes. So there's one, and there are the others. And then you just go away from the guide function. So away from it. And fill in the curve. Curve. So there we go. And that's a pretty okay version of a secant graph. Um, so the next thing we'd want to do is just get the domain of this. So the domain. Uh, the first thing that I noticed that it can't be, well, it's going to be a real number. And then it can't be... Um, negative one half. It also can't be positive one half. Uh, it doesn't really matter which one you choose. So I chose positive one half. Two increments away from that, or just one, or two over two, uh, is another one. So times n, and then n has to be an element of the integers. All right, so that's the idea. Uh, there are three key things here. The first one is to uh, always use a guide function. So really get very good at graphing sine and cosine. You're already pretty much done with secant and cosecant. Uh, the second thing is that after you've done the guide function, all of the intercepts from the pattern are going to become the vertical asymptotes. So intercepts become vertical asymptotes. There's really no point in memorizing new patterns since we already know these. Um, and then the final thing is you can use the graph, and I recommend you do, uh, to state the domain of the secant and the cosecant graphs. Um, so that's the way that I pretty much do it. Even if I don't create a graph, I just think how I would create a graph, and I end up with the domain that I'm looking for. But uh, I hope you found this helpful. Good luck.